Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. I am Manish Agrawal and in this session of chemical equilibrium, we will talk about reversible reactions. Okay, we will also look at the difference between reversible and irreversible reactions. Okay, and see how chemical equilibrium is established in reversible reactions. So let's start. Basically reactions can be said to be of two kinds, reversible and irreversible. Up till now, we were only talking about irreversible reactions. So, unless you have studied it somewhere else, all the reactions that you dealt with, okay, in your previous classes and even in this 11th standard, were all reversible reactions basically. Sorry, irreversible reactions. And now we will finally study reversible reactions and see the difference. So, first let's look at irreversible reaction. An irreversible reaction proceeds only in one direction. That is to say, here you will have something on the left hand side like a reactant okay, and something on the right hand side like a product. All right, And your reactant will go into product that is left hand side. The things at left hand side change themselves to things on the right hand side. All right. So see here when we are talking about reaction, we can talk about both a physical process that is a physical reaction or a chemical reaction okay the term reaction itself is usually used when there is a chemical process or a chemical change involved okay but the analysis that we'll be doing over here in chemical equilibrium will be equally applicable to physical processes as well that is to say that instead of a change in chemical composition over here from reactant to product that is from left hand side to right hand side of the equation okay this is your equation all right so here it is quite possible that on the left hand side you can simply have let's say liquid water okay which evaporates to steam or that is water vapor okay so here there is no chemical change okay no change in the chemical composition but still you have a left hand side which we can call as reactant and we have a right hand side which we can call as product okay and the whole thing is simply a physical process or you can say a physical reaction so the process or the things or characteristics which we'll study will equally be applicable to both physical processes as well as chemical processes all right so when i am talking about an irreversible reaction what i mean is that the reaction that is the chemical or physical process proceeds only in one direction that is in this case from left hand side of the equation to right hand side of the equation all right so this is possible but under the same experimental conditions okay the product or the right hand side doesn't change back into the reactant okay so if this backward direction a change doesn't take place okay it does not take place then you can say that the reaction is an irreversible reaction okay so these reactions do not attain equilibrium so the concept of equilibrium on which the whole chapter is based can only be observed for reversible reactions so that is to say that the irreversible reactions which you have studied up till now okay will not be studied in this chapter Okay, in this chapter, we'll basically focus on reversible reactions. So, irreversible reactions are represented by single arrow, which you have been doing since you know your junior classes. All right. So, you there is nothing new over here. Okay, and all the points of irreversible reactions are basically already known to you. Some examples of irreversible reactions are the precipitation reactions and combustion reactions. Okay. Uh, there are also other reactions, but these two reactions generally, not always, but generally tend to be irreversible in nature, okay, because the product separates out from the reactant, okay, it separates out in a way that it cannot change back to the reactant, hence there is no backward reaction, alright, when that is there, that backward reaction is absent, okay, the reaction is an irreversible reaction, so precipitation reactions can be several, for example, uh, precipitation of AgCl all right that is when NaCl okay in aqueous medium reacts with let's say silver nitrate okay in aqueous medium here what happens is all right both the reactants are in aqueous medium but when the reaction takes place between these two the product formed is NaNO3 
which is aqueous okay so it remains in uh, your solution but with it another product is formed called agcl okay which precipitates out all right this agcl basically precipitates out of the container okay it forms a salt agcl forms a solid salt all right so this is your let's say container everything is in solution nacl agno3 all the reactants are in solution but when they react the product formed is nano3 which continues to remain in the solution plus molecules of agcl which you can see separated out in form of salt okay or you can say that even solid salt okay and hence since agcl has separated out so much from the container or so much from your reactants that it cannot change back to the reactants we say the reaction is irreversible similarly combustion reactions generally tend to be irreversible in nature right for example combustion of magnesium okay that is reaction of magnesium with oxygen to give mgo that can be an example of irreversible reaction all right so there can be several irreversible reactions but most of the reactions which you will come across okay in your syllabus will actually be reversible reaction though you might not study them as reversible reactions they will mostly be reversible reactions so let's see what reversible reactions are these are reactions which proceeds in both the directions simultaneously that is to say on the left hand side if you have some reactants okay maybe one or more than one reactant and right hand side of the equation you will have products okay one or more products so when your reactants okay change themselves to products so again it can be a chemical change or it can be a physical change all right so under the same experimental conditions that is to say you have maintained some volume of the container some temperature and some pressure values under which okay so these are your experimental conditions and under these conditions your reactants are changing into products okay so under the same conditions if it is possible that your products can once again break down and change back to their original form which is the reactants okay that is the reaction can simultaneously go in forward direction which is from left to right and as well as backward direction which is from right to left okay so such reactions which under the same experimental conditions can go or proceed in both the directions simultaneously are called reversible reactions okay so these reactions actually end up attaining something called equilibrium so we'll see later on what equilibrium means and how is it attained or how is it achieved in reversible reactions so these reactions are basically represented by double arrows so you can form an arrow like this but a more standard way of okay representing reversible reactions is using half arrows okay so this upper half represents the forward direction of the reaction okay you should remember it forward reaction that is from reactants to products all right and the lower half which is okay which is in the backward direction represents the backward reaction that is from products to reactants okay so for the upper half reaction that is to say for the upper half arrow the reactant is on the left hand side and the product is on the right hand side whereas for the lower half arrow okay that is for the backward reaction the reactant is on the right hand side and the product is on the left hand side okay so don't get confused by this all right that is why i am referring as left hand side and right hand side instead of reactant and product okay because reactant for forward and backward reaction can be said to be different things right so this is what reversible reactions are and some examples of reversible reactions are haber's process if you are aware of it haber's process is basically formation of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen okay so this is actually a reversible reaction here okay so this is how the reaction looks n2 plus 3h2 reversibly gives twice of ammonia that is under the same experimental conditions that n2 and h2 are reacting to form ammonia the ammonia formed in the product side can break down once again okay that is the bond between nitrogen and hydrogen can break 
वन सेकेंड टू फॉर्म एंड टू एन एच टू अगेन राइट दैट इज यू माइट एंड अप गेटिंग द रिएक्टेंट्स बैक ओके सिमिलरली अनदर एग्जाम्पल कैन बी कॉन्टैक्ट प्रोसेस इन विच अल्टीमेटली यू फॉर्म एच टू एस ओपोर ओके बट हियर यू यूज इनिशियली इन द कॉन्टैक्ट प्रोसेस यू यूज एसओ टू गैस टू फॉर्म एसओ थ्री गैस सो दिस फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एसओ थ्री सॉरी हियर इट विल बी ऑक्सीजन ओके एसओ टू वेन रियक्स विद ऑक्सीजन फॉर्म्स एसओ थ्री सो दिस फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एसओ थ्री इज अ रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस ओके सो there is also catalyst over here but the catalyst again doesn't change the reversibility of the reaction okay so these are some examples of reversible reactions there are several more examples in fact most of the reactions which you will come across will be reversible in nature okay and only some of them will be irreversible in nature okay? so it is quite clear that for the reactions to be reversible okay the product should be able to go back to the reactants under the same experimental conditions okay that is the right hand side should go back to the left hand side under the same conditions without any change in the experimental conditions or in the container all the things that is all the reactants and all the products all the constituents of your equation should be present inside the same container under the same conditions okay and they should be able to go back and forth so in that case reversibility is possible so what happens if i open up the container for example let's take an equation like cso3 solid okay which goes to cao solid plus co2 gaseous so again this is a reversible reaction all right so in this reversible reaction initially i start with cso3 which is a solid okay and then uh, as the reaction proceeds my reactant gets converted to product and this product is includes cao which is a solid and co2 which is gaseous right so the problem here is that what i am left over with is a solid plus a gas so if the container is open that is my vessel in which the reaction is taking place is not closed if it is open then the gaseous product that is co2 carbon dioxide can escape out okay and if it escapes out from the container okay there won't be any carbon dioxide left which can react with cao calcium oxide to form back calcium carbonate that is there won't be any carbon dioxide left for reverse reaction that is for the backward reaction to take place in which case my reversible reaction okay can no longer move in the backward direction and hence it will only keep on going in the forward direction thus i have made my reversible reaction okay i have converted my reversible reaction into an irreversible reaction okay so this is often the case okay for a reaction to be reversible at times we might have to make some changes in the experimental conditions and we might even have to use a closed vessel a closed container right especially if some of the products are gaseous in nature in those cases okay the closed vessel condition okay might be mandatory right without which equilibrium cannot be established because the reaction cannot go simultaneously in both the direction as some of the gaseous reactants or products might escape out from the container and not be present over there to take part in the reaction okay for reversible reactions sometimes closed vessel is necessary for irreversible reactions it doesn't matter whether the vessel is closed or open okay if the reaction is inherently irreversible it will remain irreversible but it is also possible to convert a reversible reaction into an irreversible reaction by changing the experimental condition or or that is to say more specifically by changing whether the container changing the fact whether the container is open or closed okay so you should remember all these points and as we study further in this chapter you will learn more about reversible reactions as far as irreversible reactions are concerned we won't be actually dealing with them and you don't actually need to know a lot about them because you have already studied them in your lower classes okay so let's move ahead and see what else we have to study so let's talk about equilibrium now i told you that 
Equilibrium can only be attained by reversible reactions. It cannot be attained by irreversible reaction. So what does that mean? Okay. See, the condition of equilibrium basically means that your reaction is simultaneously going in forward and backward direction at the same rate. Okay. That is to say that rate of forward direction is equal to rate of backward direction. So this is the definition of equilibrium and since this is possible that is the forward and backward direction are have the same rate this condition is possible only when the reaction goes in both forward and backward direction equilibrium can only be achieved in reversible reactions okay so it is the very definition of the term equilibrium which makes it so that equilibrium can only be achieved by reversible reaction. It cannot be achieved by irreversible reaction. The term equilibrium is meaningless for irreversible reactions. Okay. So, see, equilibrium can be of two kinds, chemical equilibrium and physical equilibrium. Okay. So, this is not like a standard classification. It is just something that we are doing over here because we know that the reactions, the processes which we study can both be physical process as well as chemical process all right and hence the equilibrium which will be achieved can be classified as chemical equilibrium or the physical equilibrium but the basic phenomena the basic characteristics the definition the meaning the term will be same for both chemical and physical equilibrium okay the classification is just for the sake of clarity okay otherwise the phenomena and the characteristics all right the concept doesn't change it is same so once again equilibrium is nothing but the condition where rate of process in forward direction is equal to rate of process in backward direction okay so this this particular point the third point this will study in much more detail in our next session okay so let's look forward to that and until next time and once again thanks for watching edupedia world videos